Alright, happy Monday everyone. So today I decided we're going to jump back into Porsche design. It has been a while since we've talked about these. It's one of my favorites because they all draw at least a little bit of inspiration from their automotive counterparts, which is a nice touch in my opinion. I kind of like the brand. They're nice cars. Very reliable for the performance level they offer, which that's a whole other... Could we, <laughs> I could go off on cars all day. We'll try and not do that. Though it is probably inevitable in this video that that will happen, and I don't really apologize for that if it does. Yeah, great cars. Alright, cool. Classes, right? That's what you're here for. So, this piece I'm wearing is one from Porsche Design. It is the P8259. What's cool about this one, it's a nylon composite front, which means very lightweight, yet still rigid, still gives a lot. Great about holding its adjustment in shape but we still have a titanium temple all made in Japan just like all other titanium frames from Porsche Design. They go to the best and trust me when it comes to titanium Japan is simply the best. It's not a question, it's a fact. But anyways back to this guy here. So we've got a very nice very elegant yet simple design on this one just that basic pop of silver you can see that temple is pretty well sculpted and beveled which catches the light nicely as you move around this frame so we get to the front you get the very nice matte finish on the nylon which in itself is kind of unusual most of the nylons are going to have a little bit of a sheen to them because it's an injection molded process to, to go that extra step and have that very nice matte sheen on the nylon that's moving up and that's how you get that logo there and of course that continues on around the rest of the frame you still have that really nice beveling down this side that matte finish goes all the way down what's really cool on this one on the inside temple you still have that kind of a sculpted bevel all the way back down to the ear where you get it's actually slightly pre-adjusted. You do have that little bit of a bump at the end, which helps with grabbing behind the ears without quite as much molding work. It makes it easier to get that fit over the bone. All good, great, excellent things. Excellent things. Now, on to my other two favorite pieces from the Porsche collection. These are from their Flowing Titanium collection. Again, made in Japan. Titanium, Japan. Porsche. It's all synonymous. It's weird with Japan and Porsche. I know it's Germany from Stuttgart, but in this case, it's not. They go to the best because they want to be the best. So they go to Japan for the titanium. And on that note, we have their very traditional, very classic aviator. Nice little twist here on the bridge. We'll get back to that in a minute, but again, this is their flowing titanium piece. And you'll see a very, very sculpted temple in this case, but we have a nice little bevel on that on the outside edge, and on the inside, again, you've got kind of that sculpted, molded all the way back, so it's already out of the box. It's going to have a great fit for most people, which is always a step above. You really like when it fits out of the box, off the shelf, or whatever the case may be for you, then it's just going to fit better. I can adjust any frame and get it okay, but when you put a frame on like these and it just feels good, that is where a truly amazing fit and good feel on a pair of glasses comes from because, you know, it can make anything fit okay, but when it feels this good to start with, it doesn't get any better than that. There's no high amount of tension back here. It follows the curves of the head really well out of the box. The pads are bringing this one up and out just a hair more than I would like. That's a very, very simple fix that's not really going to mess with the fit and feel of the frame overall. Great things. I actually kind of like these. Yeah, I was not thinking about an aviator for myself. Now I kind of am. That's... Yeah, anyways. Now, back to the frame itself, what you want to see with these guys, again, that sculpted bevel on that outer corner there, but inside we have one of my favorite features on this particular frame. So this one has what's known as a double hinge, and that amounts to you have a spring hinge here and a spring hinge here, and that is encased 
in here. So actually a very nice design in that. As I mentioned earlier, you have this nice little sculpting that's kind of flowing that out through the frame. Works very, very well. But that keeps you from having to worry since that is all encased very well. See, you still get that nice action of it. Very, very smooth on these. And one thing they'll tell you in the design of these frames, they want this to open and close like a door on a luxury car. And trust me, I know you're not sitting here opening this, but that is exactly how it works. Very, very smooth actuation on that. So that's nice to see, and it is a very nice touch on a frame of this caliber. But as we were talking about, so we're gonna get back here around, and you can see still, I just love how light plays across that temple. It is absolutely stunning. You move back around to the front, you've got that very traditional classic aviator look. And then one thing they've thrown a little bit of a twist in here, this bar does dip down just ever so slightly in the middle. And that's a slight design deviation. Now, some people do that with their aviators, some don't. It's not terribly uncommon. Not exactly traditional either, though. And I did mention this was more of a traditional aviator overall, but that comes back to the lens shape here rather than the bridge up here and it actually cuts a little bit more angular here than a traditional aviator would. So really their only deviation of this traditional aviator design is in between my fingers here. So otherwise, very classic. And there you go. That is, what model was this? I don't remember, it's okay, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous gold titanium sunglasses. Now. Next one, we're gonna play with Porsche all day. I told you I was liable to get off on cars. This one will be the one to do it. So this one, again, we've got that flow forged, flowing titanium. I didn't say forged the first time, but you know, we'll, <laughs> that's where I'll get off on cars. So we're gonna avoid that for now. Anyhow, so the same temple design on these, that is their signature flowing titanium design. So you got that nice flowing titanium all the way back through here with that very nice bevel to it switches to the core and the temple all the way back and that does still have that same nice rounded bevel and nice shape up through the front of the frame this still carries that same double hinge mechanism again very very smooth very solid operation there on all of the temples we'll carry that on around as we move into the front of the frame now you'll notice there's no frame around the bottom of this one that is somewhat a traditional move with a nylon cord. What is not so traditional is tucking it up under the temple all the way flush here. But that's not a big deal for you. It's a real pain for me. It's not that big of a deal. It just really, really sucks if I ever have to replace that cord. I've done it before on other frames. The last time I had to do one like that, it sat on my desk for a week and I grabbed it up every time I had free time. Usually there was cursing involved, but it got done. It was doable. I lived to tell about it. I learned a few tricks. <laughs> I haven't had to use it since. I think I intentionally avoided frames with that design until I fell in love with this one, which, you know, again, very nice, very classy, very simple. And it's something I would really add to my collection, but you guys know I don't really do timeless and simple that much. Okay, now, continuing back around, we do have that nylon cord all the way around. That's not something you ever have to worry about failing too much, you know, until they get a lot of age on them. But if they do, for most frames, it is an easy replacement and a simple fix. For this one, you come in, I say, yeah, leave it with me, I'll get it fixed. Most frames that would be, a, yeah, hang out, look around the shop for a few minutes, I'll have you on your way. Just different. But then we'll carry on around back to the front of that, and you'll see, again, we've got that nice little beveling to that center bridge. And that is the same as you saw on the other frame. It doesn't look like it because it's smaller and more narrow, but overall, that is the same. And of course, that gorgeous design carries all the way around back to the other end. A very cool nose pad design on these too. I didn't get too much into that before, but that little double lock in there really keeps those from coming off down the road. And more importantly, you don't lose them and they don't turn green. That's great. 
But if you like this video, keep following along. We'll have some more stuff coming this week. We'll be back to Varnay Friday. But like, subscribe, follow along, all that cool jazz. And I will see you next time.